So welcome everybody. I think we have some new folks among us. Um, I don't remember if Shengguizhan, Shengguishan, sorry, if she is Shengguishan new. You mean the okay. Chen Qi, right? Sorry, <clears throat> that <clears throat> my pronunciation and my voice not helping. <laughs> That's okay. Chen Qi, maybe you can introduce yourself. Hello. Oh. Uh, my name is. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, uh, um, uh, my name is Shan Qi. Uh, there is something wrong with my video, so it looks strange. I'm sorry. Um, this is the first time I come to communicate with you. Um, I have um, some interest interests in. A grammar lab and a metric model. So I want to uh, have more communicate with you. Um, and I have done some contribution uh, on grammar lab Gitty um, with Wang Yanhui's help. Um, so uh, I want to join you and uh, make more uh, contribution. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. If, if you have anything to share with regards to Grimoire Lab and metrics models you've built using it, I think we would welcome that at, at whatever point you're ready to share. Um, okay, um, I think uh, I will pay, uh, I will make more preparation and yes. Uh, yes. I will I, share with you. That sounds good. I think Rhea is also new. Hi, Rhea. You're muted, Maria. Oh. See. <laughs> I said I was here this morning, so I'm old now. Yeah, <laughs> this, <clears throat> we have a slightly different audience on this meeting. This this uh, metrics models meeting and the um, Asia Pacific call are are tuned to align with both North American and Asian times as well as we can do. So you, you get a slightly different group. Uh, well, I understand the difficulty. So I, I, I work with a number of people in India, so it's always challenging to find the, the crossover times. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but uh, hello, everybody. I uh, I learned about chaos at OSPOCon last September, and I just recently started with HPE's OSPO as their uh, pro compliance program manager. And so I'm looking at chaos as a possible avenue for um, synergistic two-way effects, you know, things that using chaos to help us and maybe being able to contribute back, but I haven't quite figured out where that's going to be. So I'm lurking in a bunch of groups to kind of get the lay of the land and feel for it. Um, I, I may end up recommending this group to a colleague of mine who's particularly interested in metrics, but he just had a granddaughter. So he is uh, out for a while and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to just lurk a little bit and then report back to him and see you know what what synergizes from there that that sounds great and if if you um I'll, I'll reach out to you with regards to compliance stuff there's a lot of really interesting things happening in the risk working group there depending what kind of compliance you're speaking of but i assume licensing is part of it yes well nice to meet you Rhea. welcome is there anyone else new that i am not recognizing as new. Okay, I didn't think so, but um, so <clears throat> at our last meeting, I reviewed a metrics model, and it is not completely updated yet, as students were off for some of the break. So I'll bring that back to you on the in two weeks. Uh, I think there are some PRs and issues. Um, Elizabeth, do you, or what does everyone think? Should we go through the PRs and issues? Um, we have those, and then also identifying metrics models that have metrics that need to be developed. That's in the spreadsheet and um, discussing the release process. Is there anyone, anything else that folks would like to discuss this okay. evening? Um, there's a lot of conversation around the sustainability model, and it might be good to do that in real time. Okay, Lucas, are you are you in a position to guide us through that discussion? I can definitely, um, or at least at least point us in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would I would um, nominate Emma to. Oh, perfect. Well, we can tag team. 
Okay. <laughs> I definitely, um, I just want to say also maybe like we touched on the idea of metrics models and forming badging type efforts. And I'd love to just get a sense of what that would mean. Cause I think I understand, but I think it's very high level <laughs> for me in my brain. Absolutely. I, I don't have the links for the sustainability model at my disposal ready. I don't know if anyone does, but we could start with that. I will um, paste the link into the um, into chat. The, yeah, Doc, into the chat. Into the document. At first. We also want to make sure everyone can see this document because it is in Google Docs. So if anyone uh, can't I, get to it, let us know. I'll, sh I'll share my screen as well. Oh, wait a minute, I don't know why I just shared the minutes. Um, that was, okay, so great. We have the um, Aren't that link we there. Keep this uh, uh, meeting minutes as open access to everyone or do we have to provide the rights to this document? I believe the document that we're using for the minutes is um, public. Yes. We I, want... I was able to make an edit just now, and I'm sure I don't have any special permissions. Okay, so the way that we're building metrics models is this way. We, we just name it, talk about why we should care, and try to begin enumerating metrics that are in that model. Um, Lucas, so for sustainability, obviously that's going to cover a lot of territory and probably reach into the badging universe, but maybe Lucas or Emma together can give us a state of where this is from our last discussion. Mm. Mm. Uh, Emma. Hi, <laughs> with my voice. Um, I just think I've been putting why this matters instead of why you should care. I know that's just a tiny net, but um, maybe yeah. it's less. Anyways, so yeah, uh, we, we've been working on this in the channel for um, metrics models. And looks as now I've taken a, uh, a pass by this. Thank you so much for that. And really what we're, the, the first thing we did was to sort of like identify what are the use cases. I don't know that these are the exact right this is under the why you should care use case. I don't know exactly, um, but the some of the motivations that I'm coming from is that as a potential consumer for an open source package, I want to evaluate you know the sustainability, like how stable something is from a, you know and that can mean a lot of different things. As a maintainer or community leader, I want to maximize sustainability. So, I don't know, Lucas, um, that one I'm. Um, a little uncertain what we mean by maximize sustainability. Did you have some or others who were working on it, what we meant by that? You know, I believe that um, these additional points were added by Matt German Prey. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. But I, um, I like them. I think it was wise to cover additional personas. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, like, yeah, I, I'm a little bit stuck on that because it almost seems recursive because it's like to evaluate sustainability. Mm. I want to maximize. A anyway, so, and then as a project team evaluating our upstream projects. So that's something that is a, lots of companies are being faced with right now is really understanding in their upstream, like what projects are at risk and what does it mean to be at risk from a sustainability perspective? And then the other one was also sort of coming from our work at, or people asking around this at Microsoft was like, you know, we want to know who to fund and like what, you know, who needs it and how do I understand that, both from a who needs it perspective, like funding, but also, you know, making sure that project is also set up to be inclusive and, you know, people are, we're not funding projects that are harmful in some way to people, like that might just be a toxic community, that sort of thing. So there's lots of, there's sort of like gut, gut instincts that we had around this. And so that's part of the model is building out, like, what are we worried about, right? Like, what are we worried about if we're funding a project? And so we came up initially with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. Um, psychological safety actually just came from looking through, I think it was under DEI, what types of um, metrics already exist that might be useful. So um, 
that's one. Um, sentiment, you'll see sort of a little bit below. I hope I'm not jumping around this too much, but under sentiment, I know that I've seen Sean demo some stuff around sentiment, but I, I think, you know, where you, they're able, he's able to evaluate the um, toxicity of the conversation, something like that. So I felt like that would also be helpful, but we're just yeah. like throwing this in here at this point. Like, we're just like, this is just for folks to interact with and yeah, sorry, yeah. Sean. Yeah, so the we want to optimize inclusive language and inclusive mm -hmm. discussion. And, you know, part of that would be identifying explicitly hostile kinds of discussion. Um, yeah. And, and I think in most of the communities that we've looked at, what's most important is identifying sudden shifts in the tones of discussions around mm -hmm. different issues or pull requests. So you can presume a level of discourse that's consistent in most communities and if they're sustained already then whatever it's at it's probably fine and if they're looking to become more inclusive then maybe they want to look to optimize or encourage that kind of communication yeah but also just knowing when you have a really great moment or potentially a really destructive moment because i think you know a lot of the anecdotes of open source projects that collapse on themselves that often begins with just one hostile exchange that snowballs. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, you know, what we hopefully maybe want to get to is like once a month, you know, people run these types of processes or evaluations are like, oh, whoa, like, you know, if you notice the, the shift of tone here, I think that's really valuable. And, you know, that's a sustainability issue for sure. And then we have a category under inclusive governance. So we grab the code of conduct um, you know, is there a code of conduct? What does it look like? The code of conduct enforcement, which is actually empty right now, but there's also a lot of conversation in the um, ecosystem around enforcement being tricky to measure because, you know, just because it's my job, like I'm hired by a company to maintain something doesn't mean that um, that enforcement is like that there's equity and trust, which is why I sort of added this new DNI proposal, although I really just was a sketch. So we might find that code of common enforcement is less important to measure than this, or there, there might be a chicken and egg thing there. So that's, that's. Um, I think it's actually good it's empty at this point because I, or it's representative of where we are as an ecosystem and it, you know, evaluating that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just adding that one of the things that's been discussed in, in around this is oh, cool. just the simple existence of, of mm -hmm. a published remediation policy or a contact for yeah. if, if you, have an issue with code of conduct there's a place to go and it's a safe place to go where there's you know an independent arbiter of some kind yeah yeah you could definitely do a minimum there and again just in the effort to just throw things at the wall here etiquette guidelines are something that i've discovered are um they're optional but they can show that a maintainer or community is really being thoughtful about their interactions so a lot of times that at Microsoft, I'll have maintainers reach out and say, you know, someone's opening lots of issues or someone's like spamming. And none of these really, if you look at a code of conduct, are covered. And so the answer is like, start to document the best ways of working that, you know, in the context of the tools that you're using. And so this is just, this might be overkill. I admit that, but it's something that I'm starting to, to see as needed. I, you know, I, I reflect on some of the work that Georg did is mm -hmm. step creating our community handbook and exactly yes it's it's kind of a tedious thing to create and maintain however when it comes to things that could potentially be controversial or tense it's nice to have those guidelines written exactly. down and thought out and it prevents consternation as as a project grows i, I know I've, I've myself observed it to be useful as we go through metrics and yeah. develop them yeah, and the way they're thinking of it over in the uh, the um, ethical source community is like a stack, right? There's like the ethical guidelines, the code of conduct, like the code of conduct is like a global variable. Etiquette guidelines are like local variables, something like that. So to uh, Vinod's point that um, there, uh, there may not be an existing metric for that, mm -hmm. um, We've been finding that uh, in this group where we focus on applying metrics to use cases, real world use cases, that we sometimes identify gaps in the metrics 
um, that we need to go back to and you know pull into the broader community. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that these finer points, for example, uh, the sentiment um, might benefit from being factored out to a different work item. I think Sean, you mentioned the spreadsheet. Um, well, we do have a spreadsheet of metrics. Are you suggesting that a, a metric, a sentiment metric would be called for? Yeah, exactly. Lucas, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, I, see, I see in the spreadsheet it is being considered in a DEI working group, but it is not yet released or something. I don't, since I'm sharing my screen, I don't want to jump and drop, drive people crazy, but um, I'll make a note to go look at the metrics for the sentiment metric. I think, I, also, right. I think you're right. I'm sorry. I think you're right, but I think it is in yep. the DEI working group. <clears throat> yeah, and I think somebody pointed out earlier, you start to see the gaps in other metrics for working groups. So it's a really good exercise. Yeah. Just generally. Yeah, I agree. Um, I put known back bad actors because that's definitely, but I again, this is like my lens. I just done so much code of conduct work. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of ways privacy respecting that you can do that, but they're whisper networks. But anyway, yeah. I still put it there just as a like something to be mindful of. It doesn't necessarily have to materialize into something. Yeah, the creation of a new virtual identity is so easy. And mm -hmm. determined bad actors find a way to do that. Still um in the in the however, like in companies, like when I was at Mozilla, we did have you know, a list of names with a flag, like um, red, yellow, or green. So there's no like specifics that were privacy orienting. So if we wanted to invite like a contributor to an event or something, it would be like, oh, that person has a red flag. Like we don't, mm -hmm. so there are, but it's more of an internal match. Like you'd have to see if you had that institutional knowledge, maybe. Yeah, you can't publish it's that hard. as a no. metric, right? That's, That's like, true. And I do think organizations either softly or in, in more formal ways like Mozilla, keep track of people who have been problematic. But it's, yeah, you're right. It's it's informal and I don't know how to measure it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we, yeah, we can cross that out, but I just, uh, I thought no, I don't about wanna, things. I don't want to cross it out because it's a thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's not a bad thing to keep it in front of us and maybe we'll find a creative way of mm -hmm. addressing it. Um, but I, I wonder if, and let me ask for thoughts on this. I wonder if we might be going um, deep at the expense of breadth. Sure. Uh, right now. It, and yeah, we, I think we definitely are. What are there breadth items you want to draw us back towards? Um, on, at the top <coughs> of the section, uh, psychological safety, physical safety, down mm -hmm. through funding. Mm -hmm. I think that was just introduced by Matt. I'm not sure. It has a feeling of a Wikipedia article with multiple contributors. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I did a lot of work on some of these bullet points, not all of them. Did, did you do those top items? I did. Um, so initially there was a big bucket items, like it was like um, community inclusivity and it just linked to the DI metrics. And so what I did was I'm like, here's specific DNI metrics I think belong here. And I like, you know, you have to look through the history, but I was just trying to, to bucket things as I saw them, but I know others have also brought it in. So I agree. So I, maybe you could explain what you mean by we're going too much into depth. Cause I actually felt so, like we actually lifted it out a bit from the like big bucket well, area. I'll just um, add the psychological safety seems very orthogonal to each of the in-depth items that we have discussed. That it, Can it you define across, orthogonal? It cuts across all of them. <laughs> okay. Like each of each of the sentiments, um, code of conduct, code of conduct enforcement, project norms, equity and trust, known bad actors. These things all could positively or not positively reinforce a sense of psychological safety for, for participants or contributors. So do you see that there's a sort of kind of meta? measurements like that apply to everything and then there's specific i'm just wondering how you would yeah. see that I, happening I, so i think I, I guess i would say that that many of the items under the details for existing metrics contribute to psychological safety in large or small ways 
although psychological safety could still be defined as a metric unto itself. Just, Maybe it's that we need a different name for it because I think how you you you're running like just looking at your your sentiment and analysis mm -hmm. like that wouldn't be run on like a lot of the other ones but you run very specifically on like issues and discussion groups and so yeah um, should we just call it discussion or like what makes sense to because um, that would be more of a method then I, I think that's yes. maybe what I'm understanding is this, yeah is that in this list. Um, well, it's under communication inclusivity, but um, I think um, if we okay. if we look at the at the models mm -hmm. we the, we've done in the past, um, you, you might get a feeling for the um, you know the the level of detail that's ordinarily filled in, yeah. and I, I think we're filling in more detail than we ordinarily would. That's mm -hmm. not to say. It's, I think it's good to do this and it's the kind of thing I enjoy and want to do. Um, but um, it's, it's worth kind of being in sync with the, the previous practice. So that's really helpful. Um, for me coming in, I looked at the repository and didn't see any um, existing yeah. met metric models. So I, um, I, it would be great to have that guidance um, because I just, like I said, I just sort of like put what I thought I would want to measure and consider under each of the categories. But maybe you're saying we just want to say communication inclusivity, inclusive governance, burnout yeah. risk. There's like these different categories we know ma matter. Yeah, but I'm also worried about losing them, right? Like yeah. things like maintainer scale is something we care about. Like we know that matters for funding. I wouldn't yeah. want to just say burnout risk because then we would rely on people's default understanding of what that means or assumption well the like the way that the the group kind of structured those deliverables was that the metrics model group sort of defined the overall landscape of things that were relevant to this purpose and then identified um, either identified metrics that exist and could be used or metrics that are needed and need to be created and then directed those to working groups to work on. So this is, I just brought up the community welcoming this model because is, is this kind of at the level you're thinking of, Lucas? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's essentially the enumeration of current metrics. And I don't know that <clears throat> somebody else may have to talk. I, yeah, I feel so bad for you, Sean. I'm so no, it's sorry. Okay. No, it's fine. I feel much better than I sound. Um, oh, good. <laughs> the, um, but, but I think we are basically enumerating metrics in the only perhaps distinction between this and the metrics model around um, community welcomingness is that we identified explicit metrics that already exist. Yeah. And here we're identifying those, but we're also identifying metrics that need to be created. Yeah. And, and perhaps that's creating some confusion. It, is that what it is? Because when you showed me that, I'm like, that feels like what we're doing. Yeah. It's um, very but you're similar. saying it's that they're be because I popped I, in things like known bad actors. Well, I think this um, list up here is, that, is most of the stuff in this list up here, if I look mm -hmm. at it, is down here. Um, yeah. And I think just having uh, those two lists might be creating some confusion. Mm -hmm. I yeah. would suggest uh, uh, rather than just looking at the existing and not uh, thinking of those that can be a potential metric. What I suggest is like we keep all both the list and for those which we want the metric to be developed, we create an issue in a relevant working group with a definition mm -hmm. that what we want out of this metric mm -hmm. so that a discussion can uh, start and like a metric can be developed at the same time. So for example, like we are, as, as I pointed, sentiment is not yet developed. So issue can be created or a discussion can go on, uh, things like this. So psychological safety looks like it is an existing metric. It is okay, existing awesome. metric. Uh, I have one more question hmm. on the sustainability. So like here I see sustainability from a different angle. Another aspect I can see a sustainability from a different angle is like in terms of evolution of a project, how it is evolving. So if I consider all those factors, it's going to be a massive thing. So narrowing a scope 
is a question that is roaming in my head. I, I'm not sure, like. Yeah, I, I think um, that, that's a good thing to work out together. I was also kind of wondering about it. Um, I think we've seen that th these things can be pretty enormous or like very, very small. And um, there's an art to balancing the scope of it. Yes. Yeah, the way I look at it now is kind of like another uh, model to describe community health. And I'm afraid that could relate to a lot of, and, and, and maybe we could end up just enumer enumerating a lot of meta metrics and don't know, don't know how can we use this. Yeah. But uh, I kind of like this sustainability models because from my perspective, I think it's a group of metrics model. Like a bigger metrics model, it consists of uh, different kind of metrics model. I, I mean the small, small ones. From from the organization perspective, from contributor perspective, from the user perspective, we can we can all consider it as a sustainable in the communities. So, could we uh, give thing? I think it's kind of like a long working uh, or long uh, a big big task. Could we divide it? Uh, divide this metric uh, model group into a smaller one, and then we re re uh, group it or structure it in into this sustainability metric so, model. So, then, I think you're suggesting that there would be perhaps sustainability would be constructed from a set of more discrete metrics models. That if we tried to make sustainability one big metrics model, we'd be boiling the ocean. Mm, Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yes, because for, for my for my understanding, mm -hmm. the whole thing is about um, about uh, community health. It is health and the sustainability, and uh, and uh, if we just uh, told okay, we create uh, a metrics model, we can uh, uh, for for the community, we can just call it a sustainability metrics model. Then what else? Uh, what uh, inside it into it? So we it. have to construct it. I, I hear that. What what I'm seeing in this metrics model are things that I would think come before activity metrics that show all of the usual sustainability things that are widely looked at. Yeah. So I will have a lot of activity if I provide a safe environment, if I'm inclusive, if I have coherent governance, um, if I have a code of course, a code of conduct that's enforced. That, that if we if a project does these things and is a project that's got a use in the world, I would these are like things that come before the sustainability measures that are seen in activity metrics. Yeah. Maybe yeah. at least what I'm seeing so far. And then the sustainability after the fact is we would see the activity as well. Mm. <clears throat> I would also say too that since this is a metrics model that's being used for funding, I like that it's very co complex and that there's a lot to it so that it, we're not, you know, recommending, yeah, this is a great pro project based on two metrics, you know, and so I think that the nature of this metrics model in particular has to be complex and has to go deep because that way you're going to get a much broader and a much uh, better picture of that, what's going on with that open source project, I think. So this one, this metrics model might uh, be a little different than our, our other ones, um, just because it is tied to money. And so, yeah, and a score, I think that was Emma's also, and kind of end thing is she's looking maybe to give give a project a score or something like that, right? Well, I, I yeah. think, yeah. And uh, I'm appreciating this conversation is making me ask, but then I'm trying to think about the people that have asked for this. Um, and one example is, you know, we have a group called Open Source for Good. They're really wanting to like identify projects that they can help have a mission, who have a mission that can have impact in the world, but they're super mindful about the fact that we don't wanna sponsor projects with that code of conduct. And we don't wanna sponsor, you know, if there's like hostility or known bagged actors, those kinds of things. Um, make it hard for them. So that's, that's initially why I had added, initially it was just safety, 
So um, we have psychological and physical safety. Initially, it was just safety. We kind of broken it down into two. And I realize it, it gets more detailed, but that's like, like when we have those personas up top or the user stories. I mean, how much are we trying to draw a line to those? I guess that's my question as we're talking about doing things like breaking up work and that kind of thing. Would, would the work make more sense to break up from a user perspective then or a use case perspective and work on it that way? Or um, anyways, that's just a question I have for myself as well. But what Elizabeth is saying makes sense to me too, but uh, thank you. I'm new um, to the structure. To, so returning to um, uh, Yehui's point and Yehui, I'm sorry, I always destroy your name. I just apologize. <laughs> You're right. You're correct, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty good as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to, to his point, um, mm. we can think of this as kind of being like a, a, a wrapper um, that spans multiple metrics models. And, and we could kind of maybe break it down into smaller projects. Um, like when I think of what the team I'm working with needs to know about uh, as far as a component they might incorporate, um, it has to do with um, whether the, that the providers of that component, you know, this open source group, are going to be able to live up to the responsibility that we're entrusting them with. To, yeah. to give an example, uh, the, the Colors JS meltdown this last week, where oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was a, that was such a nightmare for me this week, and um, like that was a project where a maintainer attacked his, his own project. Oh. Um, yeah. And because he had probably kind of a psychological, probably burned out, burned out, and there is mental health issues associated yeah, with yeah. it. So that yeah. that's covered under burnout um, wellness. Yeah. So, like for, for our group, um, you know, worrying about whether, wondering whether we should incorporate that component in the first place. Like those are the things that I want to know about. From a sustainability perspective, are these are the is this team is, uh, providing this component able to uh, do security patches over the long term, which can be a real burden, mm -hmm. and uh, and are they personally reliable? Are they I don't know are they big enough? Do they have the money to keep doing security patches? Agreed. It's that very limited set of constraints that I think fits in one bundle, whatever the name of that bundle is. It's almost like the risk of using this component. So it kind of sounds like on our spreadsheet, we should make sustainability one of the sections, is what I'm hearing people mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. I don't That's know if you've point. seen. Yeah, here's the. Oh. Yeah, but not. Uh, is Sorry that about that. Spreadsheet? But there's no, a spreadsheet. No, no, I, I mean, I mean you, that's a good point. I agree. Sorry, you, you can continue. Sorry. No, no. no. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody knows what spreadsheet that is um, yeah. that we're talking about under the metrics models. This, tab. There this, you go. this one here. Yeah. This one. So we have development, community, community, open source project health is dangerously close to what I would call sustainability. Mm -hmm. The one on one, I guess that's the other one under that. Um, it could be, but then we'd also be in a similar situation where, like, well, health is about these things and that's separate. Um, when, I, when I look at what's <laughs> what we have here under sustainability, I think these are kind of I you know I said this already, but they're they're sort of like baselines for how to be a project, <laughs> you know, how to be a good project to human beings. Yeah, yeah. I see that. <clears throat> For me, sustainability is from the, like a biology point of view. And mm -hmm. it, it can describe everything in this mm -hmm. ecosystem. So I totally agree that we can use this um, biology metaphor to describe mm -hmm. all the, of the community health. I totally agree with that, and I, I really like it. But I, I think we, as I mentioned earlier, that maybe we can uh, put sustainability as a value of the group uh, or one kind of matrix model 
into these uh, or categories into this matrix model, and we can create more small matrix model for this bigger one. And we can do it uh, and uh, step by step. I don't think this sustainability and uh, the next level is metrics. No, I think met sustainability metrics model could first, first, uh, uh, the, the second step uh, or second level could ex uh, include more small metrics uh, model. Then those small metrics model could extend some more metrics. It oh. could be existed or not. I, I'm just wondering if sustainability is a broad term for what I when I'm as I read the details. This metric is more specific than the broad umbrella of sustainability. That's what I would argue. I think it feels like the first section about safety is really throwing everyone off. I don't know if that's true. Um, but I don't think that what's under safety represents community health. I think it represents a very specific component of community health that we're calling safety. Right. Um, there's lots like community health um, relies on a lot of other aspects that are not included here. And I would be concerned as someone trying to eventually use the metric that we try and say it's all the things I'd much. This is just me speaking, because I have to then kind of bring this to people who are asking these questions and say, here's a simple way that you can do this. Right. I don't want to say, like, here's all the ways you can do this. I want to say that, like, safety is a foundational component of sustainability. Like maybe it's the most important part and I would actually argue that's true for a project to be sustainable. But we could also, I'm also happy to take that off and like say like that could be its own working group. I think people would be interested in that and passionate and bring their experience and research. But I do think that burnout risk, funding, security risks, uh, I forget the viability, I think those are, yeah, and what we've tried to do is really and... break them down to be very specific. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like this is the first step to getting more specific. I don't think that anyone that has so far written in this document is saying like, this is it, right? We're saying like, here's a start. Um, so I just wanted to flag that I felt concerned when we're, that this is um, meta to all of the metrics because I feel like we'll lose the specifics that everyone you know in the ecosystem is really clamoring to do like Dwayne from ID is creating a, a working group to talk about sustainability and I feel like we could really help inform that here so anyways I'll get off my soapbox I just concerned about uh, I'm concerned that the safety piece might be throwing everyone off when I think the bullets underneath at least we probably are aligned I think that's a wise way of looking at it and let me put this idea out there that um, safety should be a metric of its own I like um, a metrics model, sorry, I get stuck in language. Uh, yeah, a um, model. <clears throat> okay. I, I think besides safety, like the word sustainability seems more broader than the scope here. Maybe rethinking the name of the model is the best solution. Like I like those uh, metrics included in this, but keeping the word sustainability if I if I just listen to the word sustainability, it takes me to a different directions. Like it can be in the activity side, it can be on the business readiness side, or it can be in a different directions. So maybe we can focus on that direction and green. I, I think the work inside this is good and it points to a certain direction, but I'm not coming up with a like proper name. We can think of a name rather than just saying sustainability. Isn't well, that the focus area? <clears throat> like, how do we name focus yeah, areas? Yeah, I think focus yeah. area is sustainability. We're calling it open source yeah. health 101, but yeah, <clears throat> I mean, maybe it is sustainability. For us, open source project health 101 is different, we, or at least okay. the way we talked about it so far as there's, right, right, we're working okay. on two focus areas. One right. is open source health 101, one is sustainability. Right. Yeah, sorry, Sean. No, you're right. You're right. I'm, my brain is broke. Well, yeah, I think I feel we're all giving your brain loving room to think. But, but I do think this, I do think these safety items, to me, this is, yeah, these, these, I don't know if they belong independently or if they're part of something bigger. I, I don't, they're, they're certainly critical because if you're not, if you want to actually have a sustainable community, you're going to need more than old white men that look like me. And if you want that, you have to do these things. 
Although one could argue that there's some projects that have been very sustained with, you know, like toxic behaviors and that sort of thing. And I think that's why this ties to the use case so importantly, oh, right? Yeah. Like that's so like foundational in the, asking that question. Cause there's certainly, I mean, we can all think of like some that have just done fine with benevolent dictators who I people to F off. <laughs> I, you know, if you're on my opinion, I think that's a vestigial tale of the history of open source that that's not how the new things are going to happen. Definitely not, but it's it's interesting. It just made me realize that I hadn't really yeah. thought of it that way. Uh, one thing I just the pop up. Sorry about safety. Yeah. It's just for from uh, from current uh, description here. It's about uh, for the individ uh, individuals uh, to make them feel safe uh, working at a community. But uh, that's one thing that if there's something about <coughs> uh, for the uh, corporation's engagement. So when when one company uh, to <coughs> join one uh, community, hmm. they want to be feel friendly and welcomed in the community. If this community is not welcome any uh, any uh, corporation's engagement, yeah. then the people, uh, I mean the employee from this corporation working at this uh, community will not feel safe. You know what I mean? <laughs> So some, uh, I mean, the, some leadership in the community, they don't want any people, um, you know, with the background of the corporations join their company, uh, join, join into these communities. So this is the case we might. So we want to evaluate if this community is, is friendly enough <coughs> for, the com for the corporation's engagement. Uh Emma, can I ask a question? Uh, like, is this focus on trying to identify open source project for future funding or future use or utilization is what <coughs> we are trying to achieve? Um, so the background is we had a bunch of folks um, working ever from GitHub sponsors to engineers working on projects, the open source for good folks who are asking like, how do I evaluate these things? And so we brought everyone together and said, what do you want to learn and why? And then from there, we kind of bucket it into like sustainability and 101. So um, they kind of represent, to all that to say, they represent different interests. And so, you know, at some point we may have to like skew towards, at least from my perspective, skew towards like mm -hmm. something that makes the most sense, feels the most achievable out of the gate, right? We don't wanna like um, bike shed forever kind of thing, but, um, so I think your question was, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like, what, what do you hope to get from this? And I can, and is that, was that the question basically? So uh, I have posted an issue which was discussed in the value <coughs> episode where we decided to move this issue to a metric model. And uh, that was on the open source readiness. So I asked this question, like in terms of funding, like, okay, you want to fund a project? Yep to see that whether it's a so similar discussion, but on a different sides of metrics is being discussed in the value working group. I've posted that. Oh, I see. So yeah, I think there's that, different, sorry. Yeah, and we were like, we proposed that we move this uh, discussion to the metric model because it aligns more with mm. the metric model rather than an individual metric. And, uh, and I see some, um, like overlapping of these things uh, in terms of the goal you are thinking of achieving from this developing this model. I'll be honest that I'm getting a bit turned around with the terms model and metric model and this, yeah, like, so yeah. I'm getting a little so turned around. I, I think metric model is the one construct and the discussion that Lucas opened up is, are there too many things in this one metric model? And <laughs> I'm not sure if there are or not. I, I think this might be just, I would call this like sustainability readiness, like all of these things together. So the structure that I understand it is that the focus area is sustainability. The mm -hmm. metrics model would be safety. The metrics model would be burnout risk. And then under okay. each of those are atomic models. At least that's how Matt and Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, I think you, so I just want to make sure that I'm using the right words. Okay. Um, so I don't know the issue you're talking about. But I mean, I think I'm 20 minutes ago. Just let me go. Yeah, I don't want to like belabor other topics here either. But um, 
yeah, funding is one thing. People want to know, should they be funding a project from the, like the GitHub sponsors group? I think they're trying to figure out a way to surface, like even through the UI or oh, this project, you know, is at risk for funders? Like, I think there's lots of potential for how people want to use this. Sky's the limit, basically. I don't think it, there's any one purpose. It's like identifying projects at risk and where funding can help because it's, funding doesn't always help. There's other things that need to happen. Like if there's a toxic community, then that's the intervention you need. And that's where we start talking about the next step, which is like, what is the intervention? So I probably rambling, I'm sorry. That's yeah. my, what I think is an answer. So I think I think we've the, each of these things is if I'm if I'm understanding safety is a metric model burnout risk is a metric model funding yes. is a metric model correct all under the heading of sustainability which is not under open source health 101 or it is? it's its own it's, it's its no. own yeah okay yeah but what if we just rename infrastructure I was, oh go ahead Lucas yeah, sorry about that what, what if we rename infrastructure sustainability yeah there's nothing there. <laughs> Even Done. getting editing help. I was going to give the action item to Matt since he's not here and let him do it. <laughs> yeah, well, let me make the change. That way, Matt will be horrified at my breaking of his spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I have broken this spreadsheet several times. So <laughs> a lot of love has gone into that spreadsheet. Yeah, there has been a lot of love. Um, well, we talked about one thing on our agenda, but I think it was a really productive discussion. I hope you all feel the same way. Um, Thank you. I have one question. Could we continue this discussion or do we need more discussion? Could we discuss it through the slide or something? Yes. Is there next steps or something to work on around this that would be helpful? So I think, I think one next step is that each of these becomes a metric under sustainability. Well, but, yeah. I'll, Right. Yeah, Metric I mean, I'm, uh, we, we we have this go, uh, Google Doc to to uh, continue the work, but I think mm -hmm. if we need more, I mean, the timely communication, could we communicate that through the Slack on this metrics model channel right. or something? Yeah, with the, with the, with the, I think so. Because yeah. I have folks with energy and the investment will work on some of these, and I, I want to help them connect with that as soon as possible. What if we um, break break up? Uh, the current sustainability kind of larger model into assignments and and you know I think there's four yeah. sections, five sections and each yeah. of us takes on it. Yeah, that works for me. I mean, Emma, would you suggest that I uh, that we actually create separate documents for each of these, or should we keep them in the same document right now? Do whatever makes sense for your workflows. Um, probably the more central possible, the better. So I, right. we don't get lost. So I and it might be good to also link from the repo so that folks meandering by can find it. That's been a challenge. At the beginning, I mean, yes. But uh, I just uh, funding model, uh, metrics model, not funding, make me misunderstand. Yeah. I'll take security. <laughs> There I actually is now, that, sorry. Sorry, yeah, I was saying this makes more sense. Okay, now under sustainability, we are focusing on these specific aspects. Within that, how we measure the funding, how we measure the risk or uh, something within that. If, if I want to add more, uh, I mean, perspective, perspective for the sustainability, I, could I add uh, something more? Uh, I mean, something more matrix model? or before discuss uh, and discuss with you, right? Because I think there are some more matrix model could be included into this sustainability things, if you agree. There could be more components beyond the five that are listed here. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that you're going in a good direction. Like I think that yeah. we're, we're close to fully understanding the problem, but we're gonna go deeper and wanna make, and wanna refactor uh, in the way that you're thinking. Yeah. So I agree. But I think we can, we, we can discuss this through the slide, slide because we are ending time today. Yeah. 
And a link to that Slack <laughs> is in the, um, the minutes, but for some reason it won't let me make that uh, um, not ending. So it will end in 14 days. So if you, anybody has problems, just let me know. The end. I just made a note that each of the metrics are in sections below so that you could point folks at, at that document, Emma, and at this to make it clear that each of these sections can be worked on independently. And that they may ultimately emerge as separate metric models. Is that correct? Can we open issues for those or what's, um, if I wanted to know someone started work or how we, I'm also need to tell other people to work. I think, I think this, this document is okay. Is the document to construct things in, and if if there are new metrics that are identified as each of these items is elaborated, then yeah, I think that would be good to create an issue for. Okay, thank you. Um, if it's not too intrusive, I'm going to add a couple sections into that document, and um, you can also update the spreadsheet, Lucas, to reflect that if you wish. Um, do we have like owner names in the spreadsheet? We could put that if, if you yeah. want to use like version for owner names that that works for now. I think you said security, right, Lucas? Yeah. Uh, and Emma, I, it feels like you've got a good handle on safety. <laughs> I, yep, I can bring our best to that. But it's also an internet problem. So it's, you know, it's ongoing, but I love that that there's a focus there. Um, so down in the bottom, right, that document, um, yep. I've added a little section to it. Yeah. And then, um, how does this feel as it's structured? Should I pull it back and mirror that over in the other document, Sean, or where do you want me to do that? I think you can, you can, um, you can leave it in here okay. and, and you can ignore the spreadsheet and Matt will probably erase your name from there anyway. So this is probably a better place to do it. I can take burnout risk. Okay, great. I'm just going to delete that from the, I'm just going to delete this right now because. I think uh, minimum vitality goes mm -hmm. with funding. Whatever. I, I propose that item. I bet you nobody else loves it. We're over time. Oh, let's we'll move yeah. back. Yeah, I'm terrible about remembering what time it is. But yes, we're over time. So I think this has been a very good discussion and we have some momentum. And please use the Slack. Emma, if if you run into any roadblocks as you work with your team, just Slack us and tag tag the folks that are here so that we can get to sure, where yeah. questions arise immediately. Yeah, and also like if people working on topics that, you know, um, you need help or ideas, like I'd love to be part of those conversations because I know others that in our group in Microsoft who, you know, hopefully I'm going to bring you more folks with me to this call is that they clear up the calendars, but the more I can bring their energy here, I think the better, yeah. the faster, faster we can go, right? That's yeah, absolutely. Different. And if they want to have a side conversation as they go to develop things like this, you know, that's something I'm sure yeah. people in the group could be coordinated to do through Slack. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank I, I you. Guess I, I guess somebody has to say we're goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. So no, we're done. <laughs> See you all later. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.